Hey everybody, this is Teach Me to Code, and uh, I'm just going to jump right into the rack here. What we're creating here is we're creating an application for rack, um, and basically what it does is it just returns a 404 error. And uh, I just copied the 404 HTML out of the Rails application, so uh, that's basically what we're going to return here. We're just going to return that, um, and this is going to be the basis for our fake Sinatra app. And uh, the idea behind this screencast is actually to uh, simulate uh, the the DSL for uh, Sinatra, at least the the basic part of it that you know you provide the verb, the path, and the block, and uh, we're going to do that by using some metaprogramming. So you know, this is just basic. Hey, we're returning a 404 status, uh, HTML um, content, and that body. So we'll set that up and we'll get that running. And because this is config.ru, Rackup just picks it up normally. So we'll load up the page. And you can see this is the page that you would have gotten if you were in Rails getting a 404. So, you know, you can just look. This is the source for the page. I, Like I said, I just copied it right out of the Rails source. So let's come in here and basically what we're going to do is we're going to require our fake Sinatra, um, which is just, you know, the definition for our DSL. And then let's go ahead and add something in here like it. So we'll just get about Chuck. And what we're going to do is we're just going to return some text. So the body will be um, help Chuck go to RubyConf. By clicking <clears throat> this link. And then um, I've actually set up a pledgy where you can go and help me cover airfare and hotel um, for RubyConf. I've already paid for the ticket but uh, I'm gonna need some help getting out there and so I would appreciate it if you just went and uh, click the link and um, you know just donate five bucks or so is, is all I'm really looking for and um, anyway the you know like I said th this link actually works and I will put this source up on github when I'm done so anyway So that, that's the basic setup. Now I, I want to demonstrate here that it actually will break when I run it because that get function or that get method isn't defined. So if we run it you can see there undefined method get. So anyway let's let's jump back in and uh, go ahead and define it in fake Sinatra. So we'll just define get um, and it's going to take a block. So basically the middleware is a class and uh, anyway we're just going to define a, an anonymous class and we're just going to define some methods on it. That's all we're going to do. So you know pretty simple metaprogramming here but you define a method and one of the methods that we need is initialize. Now initialize is called when you do class or that class dot new. In this case we expect it to take one variable. That's the app we'll assign it to an instance variable and uh, that's pretty much that so we'll set up another one here and um, the other critical piece to middleware is the call method so we'll set that up it takes the end variable pretty self-explanatory and um, <clears throat> basically in the call method we want to check two things we want to check that it is a get and that the path matches so we, we got to have that path so um, request method and in this case it's going to be get so we'll just check that it's get and we want to make sure that the path um, matches up so <clears throat> we'll just set that up here real quick and I, I believe we're just gonna have it in an instance variable so we'll just self dot path and um, let's see um, it's gonna call something let's just call it action for right now and then we can define it as a method on the um, 
on the class. So if it matches, then it calls action, and if it doesn't match, then it just passes through to the stack. So we're going to do some instance evals here, basically because we don't have any way of uh, getting the path in there except for assigning it. And the, the trick here is that um, we're doing middleware instance eval to create a class method because we don't have any control over how it calls new on this class when it creates the middleware. So this is actually going to be a class variable, which means we need to go over to self.path and make it self.class.path so that it refers to the, the parent path. Um, so anyway, that's set up, and then what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to set up the action. We need to sign the path. Is all we have left to do. So let's go ahead and set up the action um, method, which is on line nine. You can see we're calling action, and this one's easy because that's just the block that we're passing in. And uh, so. If you go back to the config.ru, you can look, and that's that's what we pass to um, get. So we'll set the path to the path that we're passing into this, and then use sets up this class uh, to be the basis for our middleware. So then, if we go ahead and we uh, we fire up uh, Sinatra again or our our app again, we see undefined method get. So let's see. I didn't. I think I forgot to save it. So there we go. All right. It looks like there's an undefined local variable or method middleware m i d d l where. So uh, I misspelled that. Let's scroll up and see if we can find it here real quick. Oh, right there, line three. All right. So so we should be good to go here. So now let's start this up. So then if we bring up our web browser, then we can um, bring up localhost four five six seven about Chuck, and there you go. We have we have our text right there. Um, and again, that that link is valid. And that'll take you to the pledgy where you can uh, help me go down to uh, RubyConf. And really what I'm hoping to happen there is two things. One, I'm hoping to pick up some new things that I can show you on Teach Me to Code. And the other thing is, is the Teach Me to Code podcast, I'll have the opportunity to interview some people while I'm there. All right, so let's generalize this. Let's make it so that uh, get or post or put or whatever can actually uh, connect to this. So... Um, we're going to add a request method, and that's basically the, the you know the verb, the get, pop, uh, get post put delete. So we need we need to be able to assign that as well to the class, just like we did for the path. So we're going to just set up getters and setters. And I realized that I probably could have used um, attr accessor or um, attr reader and attr writer. Um, but you know this kind of demonstrates hey we we need a setter and a getter and and where this is going to be stored so we've set it up for the request method now we need to actually go up to our call method and uh, change it so that this actually calls out to the class as well so it'll be self dot class dot request method and then we need to just assign it down here so middleware dot request method equals request method you know no magic there and then I think we're good to go so what we'll go ahead and do is we'll actually define our get method and it has the same signature a path and a block And then it'll just call into generic request method or general request method, excuse me. And we'll just pass get and a path, which is the path that came in in the block. And then it should set it up all the same. So let's go ahead and save it and run it. And then we'll go ahead and pull up the web browser and uh, we'll just go ahead and refresh this because it should work and then let's just go back to the root path and uh, or you know anything we'll just go back to chuck a it doesn't work you take the a off and it works so so that's that's basically what i wanted to show you here um, so we'll go ahead and we'll just copy this and we'll define uh, post put and delete and
and uh, and this basically gets us the functionality that we see in Sinatra where you basically say get and then you pass a, uh, a path and then a block um, which is actually a really nice routing syntax. Um, let's just change these verbs. All right, so let's just go ahead and run this again. Um, you know, I didn't really change anything as far as the get goes, so you know again if we refresh this or do anything with it it should perform the same way because we didn't change any of the code that is actually running but I, I don't really want to go into setting up a post or anything like that so um, at this point I think we're pretty much done so uh, let's go ahead and uh, set up a, a github for this and you'll have to excuse me I have a little bit of a cold if you can't tell um, anyway, so we'll we'll pull this up. Um, we'll create a new repository. Call it Fake Sinatra, and give it a short description. create the repository and then all I really need are these lines right here and it's just easier to copy and paste them so we'll get init add commit and then I can't get push I want a remote add there we go and we are off so now if you go to Charles or github.com slash Charles Maxwood slash fake underscore Sinatra, then you should be good to go. Thank you for watching. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. This episode is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo.